Over the last several years, Fast Radius has spent $200 million uh, deploying cloud 3D printing services. And a few days ago, they went bankrupt. Let's talk about that just a little bit. So it has been really rough in the financial markets for 3D printing companies lately. Uh, Fast Radius is only just one of the most recent ones. Uh, Shapeways originally debuted with the expectation of a couple hundred million dollars in valuation. Uh, they're worth less than $30 million right now and have been downgraded to a penny stock. Desktop Metal, which originally debuted in uh, 2020 at about uh, $5 billion, is currently worth $750 million. Um, it's tough out there and it's interesting to see because right now, even though there's this, this looming threat of recession uh, around all over the world, manufacturing is quite strong. Job hiring and manufacturing has been increasing over the last couple of months. So anybody making stuff is doing well. So there's a question of why is 3D printing not doing well? Uh, and there's a few reasons that I think this is, uh, number one, Nobody really knows how to make something with 3D printed. There's not 3D printed products out there. Um, there's not a lot of things off the shelf that are having tens of millions of parts made with 3D printing. There's not even really cars or bespoke kind of items that are really popular or set items that are made with 3D printing. Now, obviously here at Slant 3D, we work with all kinds of products that are making thousands of pieces but they're not super, super mainstream and they're not huge markets in the context of the, the multi hundred billion dollar plastics manufacturing market. 3D printing doesn't make a lot of the pieces. Most of the industry is actually making money off of selling machines. So like Desktop Metal or Prusa or anybody else who sells a machine as their main business is doing okay, but not doing great. Because right now with the fear of recession, uh, people are not buying personal machines. And since a lot of companies don't know what to do with them, they're not buying the large professional machines. And if a company is looking to explore it, they're going to explore it here for a year or two or 10 uh, before they find out what to do with that 3D printer. So selling machines is kind of played out because everybody who has a machine has got all the machines that they want, whether you're corporate or personal. So there's not a lot of money there. Uh, if you look at like HP with their multi-jet fusion machines, historically HP has lost money on multi-jet fusion because I, I think they've been following kind of the standard printer model, which is sell the machine fairly at cost, even though it's like a quarter million dollar machine and then make money on the material. And they don't have enough machines or again, demand for 3D printed parts to uh, make money on the material yet. So it's, it's tough because 3D printing still hasn't actually found its killer app. What is the thing that 3D printing makes? What is the actual product, not the feature, what is the actual product that 3D printing makes that sets it apart and allows it to be really scalable? And this is a problem across the board. It's a problem that we fight with here at Slant 3D all the time. We're able to produce hundreds of thousands of parts for less than the cost of injection molding, but the people who need that capability are fairly few and far between which is why our team has focused so much on internal product design and creating items that nobody else has because we know how to use the process and take advantage of it. But financially, it's really tough out there. And one last thing, since most 3D printing companies are technically still in the startup phase, with the looming threat of recession, investor money has really dried up. It's really tough to raise, especially for a manufacturing company because it is less interesting than an app that has infinite scalability and very low capital expense. Whereas a printing service or any, a printer company itself has really high cost to operate, to build machines and hire people. And it doesn't really deploy at the same kind of scale as something like a YouTube would. So investors aren't as ready and willing to re-up on 3D printing uh, investments the way they have in the last couple of years as 3D printing production became more mainstream. So that's part of, the, part of the large reason that a fast radius went bankrupt is they ha were living off of investor money and the investors just didn't give them more. So they ran out. Hopefully this doesn't continue. It's really tough when the industry continues to take hits like this, when we're all trying to build products and services that allow 3D printing to really meet its potential of eliminating the need for molds and reducing the waste of traditional manufacturing and making it so much more accessible to manufacture products but it looks like it's gonna be kind of a long road to hoe and 
the thing that we really need, if anybody's watching this video and is wondering what should be done, we need 3D printed products, original 3D printed products that take advantage of the process, solve a problem for the customer, and are an exceptional product that just happens to use 3D printing. Right now, everybody's playing with it. Somebody needs to be very serious about it and use the benefits of the technology to create something truly original and awesome that not only propels that product into stardom, but takes the industry and printing in general along with it. Much the way that like Tesla proved out electric cars and now everybody else is making electric cars. We need somebody to make a 3D printed product that is just fantastic. And that will solve a lot of the problems because right now 3D printing is kind of a solution in search of a really good problem. Please like and subscribe down below and let us know if there's other news or topics that you'd like us to talk about. Have a great day, everybody.